hi, hello. I'll just I'll do this silly thing and just say hi, Hal Round or whoever's watching this. Um, yeah. This is a series of interviews that I'm doing. My name is Taylor Mack with a bunch of harp artists um, so that you all can get to know them and so I can get to know them and also we can get to know their work. And if you don't know anything about the harp program, it's um, uh, they, they offer up space and sometimes co-produce, sometimes produce, sometimes um, offer um, uh, uh, skills and crafts and abilities uh, for people to self-produce. Uh, and you get a number of years, however long really you kind of want to take um, uh, to work on a project in, in, in New York City. And, uh, and um, I'm here with Misha Chowdhury to talk to you about your project. Uh, so um, uh, why don't we just start off what you want to, what's the name? What's it about? Uh, I'm really, I loved all the different uh, meanings uh, in the title. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's, so the project that I'm working on at, um, my harp project is actually a piece called Rheology that hasn't, um, I'm not sure if that's the piece that you're talking about, or I, I was going to oh. share some previous, there's like, there's two different projects I'm juggling here, one of which I, is I this, mean, one of which is yeah. this serial project called Vichitra that I've been working on during the pandemic, and one of the episodes um, premiered here in August? I want to say. Um, so that was certainly under the auspices of my harp residency. Um, and it gets really confusing, totally. but or, or not confusing because you're an artist. So whatever you're working on, you're exactly. working on. And, 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 and I, I, looking at your bio, I see, oh, this is a queen who knows how to apply for things. Uh, <laughs> as I'm a queen who knows oh how to God, apply for things. And you have to juggle amazing. 5 million different things. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm putting that in my bio from now on. A queen who knows how to apply to for things, Taylor Mac. Is well, it just means you have agency. You know, you're doing it yourself, which is, I think, impressive in this culture where we always are asking for permission to be creative. It's just nice to uh, <laughs> meet artists who are doing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I can talk a little bit about um, Vichitra, the project that isn't my official like in-person live harp project, which I am at the very early stages of developing. That's a project I can talk about as well. But during the last, I've been working on this um, audio-visual experiment um, called Vichitra that um, sort of broadly has been a, a, an opportunity to dig into various different um, collaborations under the umbrella of queer South Asian imagination, which for me is just like a very sneaky way of saying whatever the fuck I want because I am queer and South Asian. And is that, is that grant language or is that? Totally. Is that like, yeah, yeah, That's totally. grant language, <laughs> but it's also sort of allowed for, for a kind of, um, you know, by, by articulating the project as such, um, um, I have given self permission to um, dig into four back to back, you know, we've done four episodes between June and December um, with different theaters. I did one in the Criminal Queerness Festival in June, one at here in August, one at Ars Nova in October, and then most recently one at the Bushwick Star in December. and without having called the project an experiment in queer South Asian imagination, I don't know that I would have been allowed myself to be as sort of audacious and prolific in doing like, uh, in developing these collaborations with other queer South Asian artists, like uh -huh. so robustly, so back to back, I think I tend to like have, um, I don't know, so it feels as, branding language actually sort of like allowed for uh, a particular kind of like, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I've been wanting to collaborate with these queer Carnatic musicians forever. Um, here's an opportunity to do so under the umbrella of this project. Yeah. So, and by, by uh, branding it that, as you say, uh, do, 
do you feel like you rally the troops as a, a you know like what if you just had a a project without that brand maybe the um the artists that you were interested in working with wouldn't respond or would they respond anyways you, who knows? yeah i mean i think that there's something about uh i think that the branding allows for um folks that because i tend to work because theater is so insular i think like um it's been a helpful way by which I've been able to reach out to queer South Asian artists who don't necessarily, um, or or I haven't done that necessarily yet, but I feel as though the hope is to reach out to um, artists who don't like know who I am or work explicitly in the theater, may not know what your art center mm -hmm. is or Ars right. Nova or the Bushwick Star, but like- <laughs> And probably don't. <laughs> right, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But they do, but like, oh, queer South Asian collaboration is something that interests them. And so yeah. there's a pull by virtue of that language. Right, you find yeah. your tribe. Yeah, yeah so uh, Lee, Lee Brewer uh, has told me that every project he makes, he just he just says, well, what what do I want to learn about? What am I curious about? Basically? Exactly. And so, so he like says, I want to, I, I'm really curious about gospel music. So I'm going to make a piece called Gospel at Colonus, Absolutely. right? Then, then he gets to work with the Blind Boys of Alabama and then they become lifelong friends. And so I'm, I guess I'm curious about that in terms of your collaboration and who you're pulling into your yeah, various it's works. Been really, it's been an opportunity to like dig into these very granular questions um like uh the the most recent episode was a collaboration with um queer south indian classical musicians um and because this is an ongoing series and i don't have to cram like my whole manifesto about you know, what it might mean to be queer in South Asian into one project. It's like, oh, this piece is about a, this piece is an opportunity for us to look at, um, you know, uh, a legend about uh, uh, an ancient Tamil uh, poet who as a young girl prayed to be transformed into an old woman so she wouldn't have to marry, right? So like this tiny little story, I we've been able to sort of lean into these really uh, sort of microscopic source materials or questions. Um, and, and those questions are emerging out of these conversations um, with new collaborators, which is really exciting to me. It's more about like, it's in some ways it's a kind of curatorial practice to just to be like okay uh i want to engage with these other queer south asian artists and what we make need not necessarily be like about uh like have any thesis statement about queerness or south asianness it's like oh no no here we are it's queer and south asian because we are and now we can talk about whatever we want um, I know. So I, I, get, I get that a lot too. Like I'll write something and be like, "Where was the queer in that?" I was like, "Did you not look at me? I was on stage for twenty totally, hours. exactly. Like, yeah. Did I have to talk queer, 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 queer?" Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we did this one. We did that episode, um, which was a collaboration with Karnataka classical musicians. The third episode was um, an interview-based piece. Um, that I worked on, co-created with my partner, Cameron Neal, who is Black. Um, and it was a question, uh, the question sort of guiding that piece was, we were asking all kinds of different Black and South Asian folks, uh, like, what is your first memory of a Black person? Or what, or what is your first memory of a South Asian person? And it was a way by which we like got these really, uh, crazy stories about um, that I don't think we would have been able to elicit otherwise. You know, I was talking to a 84 year old Bengali woman who was talking about like as a six year old in during World War II in Eastern India, seeing black American soldiers 
drive tanks through their town and throw Butterfinger chocolates out the window right. and these like really unexpected stories um, were the sort of fuel for that third and um, yeah and the second the second episode that I have a clip from um, that we can show at some point during our chat today was a piece about that I wrote about a, a, a diasporic Bengali kid who uh, imagines that he is reincarnated as this uh, Bengali freedom, fright, freedom fighter who was killed in the early 20th century. And yeah, it's just been a fun opportunity to explore all these different nooks and crannies. Um, these like ideas that I've had in the back of my mind and that needed dusting off. So, mm. yeah. Well, let's, let's watch it right now and then we sure. can talk about it. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Great. Here's a little three minute clip from the middle of, and this is a collab, the, uh, the two core collaborators on this project are my partner, Cameron Neal, um, who is the video artist and um, Jeremy Bloom, who is the sound designer. So the three of us have been um, coming together, bringing our different skills uh -huh. to the table. And when you say it. partner, do you mean artistic partner? Romantic partner lover? and artistic Romantic, partner, yeah. yes. Oh, oh, that's Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, we've been doing a lot of work together. <laughs> for sure. Fun. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. I love that image. <laughs> Is this working now? Great. Nobody's been back to Bangladesh in my family since prior to partition. And my grandmother, <clears throat> the last time she had been in Dhaka was in 1938. That's when she left. She had these sort of ridiculous, vague instructions. She was like, you know, Unishwatri Shale. And so I like was like rickshawing around old Dhaka asking random people on the street like sorry um, do you know where I'm looking for a house uh, in 1938 there was like a haunted house and like and eventually they just kept being like Hindu so I went over there and I went into this abandoned looking building and there was this old woman in the corner of one of the like balconies I don't know it feels like I'm trying to remember a dream or something the image is super vague she was wearing like a white shadi like she was a widow and I remember I bent down to do pronam, which is the sign of respect to elders, where we bend down and like touch touch their two feet and then touch our foreheads. But she like stopped me and she was like, absolutely not. You don't. You're a Brahmin. You're a Brahmin. You're higher caste than I am. It's wrong for you to touch my feet, to pay me those respects. And then this very strange look came over her and this I remember super clearly she like she was looking right at me and she started to sing this song Akbar Bidai De Kuriashi Akbar bidai de maan khure aashi Haashi haashi Purbu bhaashi Dekh be bharu tu baashi Aami e haashi haashi Purbu bhaashi Dekh be bharu tu baashi Akbar bidai de maan khure aashi Kalir bumma tuiri kore 
I could show you more of it, but it's available. I, I, that's what that's what I love about this work in this moment is people could just, it's just it's up there, it's free, people can go watch. It. Yeah, yeah. And is there any so what's the this this is the work, or is there a plan to add an a live element to it, or is that's just totally different work that you're making? This project is at, you know, like I can imagine that who knows, these episodes are uh our video pieces um mm -hmm. i can certainly imagine i mean this um this story that uh inspired the the episode that you just watched is a piece that i have been you know wanting to uh, like i've been writing a like a a full-fledged play about it forever so mm -hmm. you know there may be i think that these may serve as off points for larger live um, ideas, but I think yeah. that for now this project very much lives in this form. There are these thirty-minute audiovisual things. And and was that you speaking and singing? Yeah, that was me. Oh my god, your voice is so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but not all of them are. Some of them are. Uh, you you've asked a lot of. Um, what I assume to be uh, non-professional actors to tell stories of their dreams, or or are they actors? Like in the in the one video that you sent me. Um, uh, or your your, your internet was funky um, for just a second, but um, yeah, I think I, I got your question. Yeah, um, yeah, the second episode was much more explicitly like a thing that I wrote that I performed. The first and third episode uh, were a little bit more sort of documentary in their, in their approach. Like what we did with that raw material was certainly theatrical, but the voices were these um, real sound bites from submissions of dreams in the first episode and interviews in the third episode. Um, so yeah, we haven't, uh, we haven't asked anyone to sort of like, um, it's been a, a gathering and editing kind of process for those other episodes. There hasn't been, none of these episodes have featured like an actor uh, enacting something pre-planned in that way. Yeah, yeah. And is, do you find yourself drawn to that style of um, uh, collaboration or, or are you more just like hybrid, like whatever works for the moment? <laughs> Whatever works I mean, for the I content. Am, I think this is a very different. Um, this that project is um, sort of exercising a whole different set of muscles in me than what I'm used to. Most of my mm. I tend to be, you know, prior to this project, I really am like a live theater person. I'm like a very performer driven, actor driven uh, kind of director and writer. Um, but in this moment, I felt as though if I was going to be working in this medium, I wanted to be drawing upon what makes, for me as a consumer, those media so compelling. Like I wanted to, you know, Jeremy, the sound designer, is a sound designer for Radiolab and Nancy. And, um, you know, I'm like, okay, what is it about uh, a podcast like Love and Radio, for example, that like, is so compelling to me. Can I steal some of those tools as a theater maker to uh, create a certain kind of intimacy in the space between, you know, as long as we are engaging in uh, material that is between the screen and us, I'm like, oh, maybe there's a different set of uh, 
skills that I need to investigate to like write a ghost story for someone's laptop screen rather than mm -hmm. um, out in the world. But yes, I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited about how much new, uh, I'm excited about having learned all of this new stuff. I'm like a video editor and an audio <laughs> editor now, but I'm also very like hungry to return to uh, uh, making work in three dimensions. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so then talk to me about pace and, and tone, because th these are just the my impressions from just seeing this video work, because I haven't seen your live work. Uh, but the, the video work, um, or films, I would, I would call them, uh, are, uh, even though they're not made on film, right? Uh, but there, there's a certain kind of pace to them, which, uh, um, it, it's, uh, it's a meditative pace. It's, uh, um, it's an intimate pace, I guess. Uh, and is that is that because of uh, it, it? Does it depend on the on the piece? Um, because I find it, I found it very, um, I don't know, just refreshing. Maybe because all my work is like, Wah! you know, but but I found it just so calming and just to listen to people tell me their stories of dreams that they had while watching this rice dissolve. Totally. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. I actually hadn't thought about the fact that that is maybe one sort of through line between my usual work in the theater and these pieces. Like I think I tend to um, not always necessarily in a meditative way, but I do think like, uh, I think I try to slow the heartbeat down a little bit and like mm. how do I I don't know I think that I mean I think it's it's not as if this is something radical and new that I'm doing but I think that the work that I've always gone to um you know I've always been uh drawn to dance as of you for example and I think that there's like um a willingness there's a patience sometimes um, in dance or in um, even in even as like a consumer of film and my favorite theater. Like I think I'm always like attracted to uh, like the stuff that I love to watch. I could watch for a very long time, and so I think that sense of like duration is something that I've always been interested in. Like push to its limit, um, but but in service of like, I think, like a payoff at the end, right? I think it's like, <laughs> I think it's like, how do you pull time like taffy such that it, or like pull the rubber band so that it snaps back or whatever, there has to be some like, um, yeah, that's sort of like legato, staccato, but yeah, time signature is something that I'm always thinking about um, in my work whether it's like consciously or not. Well, there's this wonderful thing at the end of the um, the Queer Dreams uh, piece, which I don't know the title of it, but uh, it's uh, where a series of people are telling their dreams that they've had. Yeah. And um, normally when somebody tells you your dream, you're like, oh, I'm checking out. But it, uh, there's something about, maybe it was about ear, earbuds in my ears and I feel like they're I'm in bed with them and they're all kind of some of them have stuffed up noses and so oh, they're yeah. a little sleepy and that and I so I was curious a about the prompt that you gave them uh but also uh, there's a moment at the end where she says um I, I wrote it down I've just arrived here and uh, <laughs> this one and you're talking about kind of a payoff at the end yeah, yeah. and it, it just hit me that uh that we were all um uh, the dreams kind of never have beginnings or endings really. And, uh, and that is of course life. And, and we're, we're waking up in the middle of um, a lot of other people's stories. And so I, I guess I really just wanted you to speak about those two things. <laughs> like totally, the that you gave yeah. And what does it mean to wake up in, in the middle of somebody else's story, <laughs> multiple people's stories? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like, that's the 
like it's been really wonderful to try and find um like my how do i say this like i think like turn and event and like that like those little payoffs that we are always sort of like seeking to create as theater makers i've registered that like even in collecting material like these dreams and the question for those I don't even know if there was an explicit question. It was simply like we were like record, wake up and record a voicemail of like literally right then what you remember of what you dreamed. Um, so there were all of these submissions and uh, in crafting a, a piece out of them, a patchwork out of them, it was so fascinating to like do that same kind of storytelling work around like oh that's where the like i've just arrived here i like in hearing that dream i was i was like oh of course that's the end um there's a like that same experience that you had that you sort of like described physically as the experience that i had in hearing that sort of like raw material the first round and then it's simply about like how do we build the runway that gets us to that point uh, so that the listener hears that same experience, has that same experience that I had or some experience of, uh, yeah. of unexpected payoff. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm working on a piece uh, that is nothing, 70 minutes of nothing but entrances and exits. Cause I said, I, I kind of want to just oh, like, I love that. cut out the middle, you know, <laughs> just, like, just like, but it felt like when I was listening to your piece, I was like, oh, this is cutting out the entrance and the exit. And we're getting them the middle in a, in a way, because uh, it, if in, in some ways, when you listen to people talk on the radio, you've got all that stuff in between that gets you to the core. And 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 what the, what you were able to do is cut away all of that, uh, all that stuff, and just give us the the root of who these people are in that moment. I, I don't. Know, was, I found it very beautiful. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we probably got over our time, but what? I, uh, but why don't you like? What do you need? What do you need right now? What do you need question. from the larger community to help you make your work? And and also, what do you? Um, when are you hoping to sh share the piece that you're working at the Herard Center um, with the larger community? And yeah, all of that. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, I am just um, embarking on my journey with here, and I feel that I haven't really even I. I am the I am the in the new crop of art yeah. artists, and my residency started in April, right at the beginning of the pandemic. So I haven't even met much of the sort of m much of the cohort in person. And so I think there's a long runway to developing this piece, rheology, that I'm working on with my mom. Actually, my mom's a physicist. Um, so the What's piece that I'm, like to grow up with? Is that what the piece is about? My parents are both physicists. Else? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm an only child of two physicists, and oh my God. That, <laughs> is, uh, that is part of what I'm tackling in this work. It's called rheology, <laughs> and we really are at the beginning stages of it. So I don't imagine that. I mean, it's crazy to think so far down the line, but because everything is sort of slowed down, and uh, you know, I kind of imagine that this piece won't see the light of day until 2023, 2024. Um, yeah. But what's, it's, I, you know, I was talking about patience and time signature, and I think that um, you were asking what I need. I, I sort of feel like what I need is what I'm, what I'm getting in some way. I feel like um, there's, uh, uh, the world has slowed down inevitably. And because of that, I'm being able to um, like lean into the sort of longer form work that I've been wanting to, or like work that requires a longer runway that I don't usually have the opportunity to take the time to make. And I want to shout out also, I'm one of like, uh, I'm one of Soho Rep's project number one artist this year, which means that I have this salary that is allowing me to 
just like sit right and write. You, baby. Um, right so that's this like magical <laughs> thing that I have that I've never had the opportunity. I'm like, oh great, sure. Um, I will, you know, every two weeks I will share pages uh, of this. I, I'm, you know, I'm I'm being able to be a writer in a way that I haven't uh, necessarily been able, you know, usually it's like one, one sort of writerly or creatorly project a year because as a director, it's like, I'm working on seven things at once and like, actually, no, maybe I don't have to work on seven things at once right now and I can just write for three months and I need that and I'm kind of getting that, which is, glorious thanks Amazing. to you know you know thanks to institutions like here in Soho Rep that are like giving me the the breathing room <laughs> to slow down a little bit. Amazing. Yeah. Um uh, well good. I'm glad. I mean look I I told Kristen I was gonna do the little revenge. It was you know at the most it was gonna be two years and ended up being four years of workshopping Amazing. at the Hero Ed Center. And I told her I told her it was gonna have three people in it. And ended up having 36 people in it. I said it was going to be 90 wow. minutes. It was five hours. You know, like take the time you need. <laughs> take the yeah. Time you need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks. Is there anything else you want to share with the the how round community? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. I'm, I mostly was just like, oh, great! I get to chat with. You. This is uh, like an opportunity for us to just have a half an hour chat and. Um, yeah, I mean, vichitra.media, V-I-C-H-I-T-R-A.media is the website for the the ongoing sort of audiovisual project. And all those episodes are we'll up. We'll get the how around people to put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So those are things that oh, you great. can watch right yeah. now. And if you, you know, it's like so weird in this moment to not have that kind of live feedback. So, you know, if people watch it, feel free to like, reach out to me and be like, this is what I thought. I didn't like it. I liked it just because I missed that kind of like <laughs> that. Do you like, do you connection. actually like it when people tell you they don't like things? <laughs> I mean, not if they just say they don't like it, but I do actually appreciate yeah. like, you know, like a friend, you know, like a piece that I did under the radar in January, somebody was like, I think I didn't, uh, like I lost you after that moment. And I was like, oh, like, you know, like it may, you know, it hurts the ego for a second, but if there is a very right. specific like experience that someone articulates, I'm like, oh, wow, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like being told, uh, yeah, the things, I like that kind of feedback. I don't, I don't like being told um, when, I don't like the thumbs up, thumbs down. It just exhausts me. Praise and blame, no, are, sure. I find very exhausting. But when somebody actually engages in the ideas of a, of a work, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I know what's communicating now because they didn't talk at all about what I wanted them to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, 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 but, yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, well, um, thanks for talking. Thanks <laughs> for talking to me. Thanks for taking too. the time to As do you these interviews. I'm so glad I got to uh, like learn a little bit about your work and get to know it a little bit. I can't wait to learn more and see. Likewise, so, yeah, and hopefully work together. Oh my God, yes, please, let's do it. Yeah.